All right, we're live. Hi, everyone. Rosie, Roger, and Bree with Rivet Real Estate coming live to you from Austin, Texas. And, uh, you know, um, everybody kept on talking about, hey, why don't you guys just go live? And here we are in 2024. We're going to be showing up live every week like a clockwork to make sure we bring to you what you deserve to know about Texas market. So um, we have been studying all week to figure out what's the newest and best happening in Austin, Texas and the surrounding big metros like Dallas and Houston. So Roger, take it away. Give us the headlines. What's going on? All right. Thank you so much. So we'll just start, you know, alphabetically. We'll start with Austin and then work our way down to San Antonio. And uh, really, um, you know, there's a lot of great news out there and uh, a lot of it centered around new development. Right. So uh, let's start with Austin. Austin, this is uh, going to pull on a lot of people's heartstrings, but the Highland Lanes on Burnett is going to be demolished. They're planning to build the, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry to say that. Yeah, this is brand new news to me. <laughs> yeah, okay. they're demolishing it. It'll be 300 to 350 to 400 apartments that will be coming in there. And 12% of the multifamily will be allocated towards affordable housing. Wow, much needed. Yeah. yeah. Now, this next piece of news is it blows your nut. Just the numbers that I'm going to mention are going to blow your mind. So you're going to expect a lot more industrial space entering the market. Uh, currently, we have 18.2 million square feet under construction just in our hill country area. Mm. Right. That is a lot of square wow. footage. It's even hard to, to really grasp that. So um, we'll drop some. We'll give you some relative numbers on how you can compare that and uh, you know, it's hard to imagine 18.2 million uh, square feet, but I think after our news update, you'll have a better idea of what that means. Um, and um, there's a there's several hundred square feet, like 600 square feet. Five, a lot of them are over half a million square feet or nearabouts in, in development. And we're seeing condo properties uh, being developed again. We're seeing a lot of hotels and condos being developed all across the state. Matter of fact, we're seeing San Antonio with, I think, an 18-story property. And uh, th there was there was new properties that just entered and are actually open. So the C, I believe it's a C3 property down in downtown Austin. That one is, has come online. And wow. uh, sorry, guys. Uh, so uh, there is, um, there's, a uh, condo property being built just shortly or really in, in proximity to Town Lake YMCA. So, uh, Bree, Rosie, you guys know the YMCA right there on Fifth Street, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're building a condo high rise just shortly, very close to there. And uh, the price point is going to start anywhere between seven hundred and two million dollars for anybody who's looking to, to maybe buy something within the city. Mm hmm. And uh, so, uh, and I know you guys are going to love this news because I think it's, um, we can say what we want about this person, right? But I think it's relatively a big deal. She's a woman entrepreneur. She's the $4 billion woman. And uh, she's seen all across TV. We know her name. It's a household name. She's opening up a shop in the domain. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Brie, you want to guess? No, I'm I'm on the edge of my seat. Like, who is this? <laughs> well, well, well. Make a guess. You get at least two chances. Uh, yeah. Who can you think of? A you watch her on TV all the time. And she's a woman. Everybody knows her name. People have mixed feelings about her. She's oh. the controversy most of the she's time. An Guys, I have a blank. She runs a family business. And people often wonder what is she really famous for. Roger, go ahead. Okay, let me let's give her one more guess. Uh, it, uh, one more clue. Her name starts with a K. Kendra Scott. No, Kim oh. Kardashian is what? opening what? up the store. Yeah, Skims. No, okay, that was not even in the back <laughs> of my mind. I was like, no way, it's someone that I would know. Yeah, she's well. The reason why you probably felt that way is because she's opened up four stores this year. Although a large majority of her sales are happening online. She's uh, actually branching out into brick and mortar stores. 
uh, I guess, as an attempt to increase awareness around her brand and also uh, gain some extra sales. So one of those, those four stores are going to be here in Austin in the domain where the Casper store originally, Casper Mattress. Next to Apple. Apple. Next to Apple. Apple. So it's what a really prime good. location, high traffic location. And she's up now. The reason it's a, it's a headline is because, hey, wherever the news goes, money flows, right? right. So it's not always about um, what is happening in the market. It's what's most talked about in the market. So skim store opening, live location, no longer have to be sold to other retailers. And she's coming in person to launch it. You can see the hype it's going to bring. Big hype. I'll yeah. be there. <laughs> right. we'll be covering the news right there on the ground you know, uh, there you go go live with Brie on the store opening day okay yeah so guys I imagine, you know the, sorry uh, i just want to say one thing yeah, whenever you're talking about imagining 18 million acres mm -hmm. i just did a little bit of quick math just so that i could try to imagine it square feet now 18 well 18 oh 18 million, okay, 18 million square feet, feet. Okay, well, then I didn't do the right math, but okay, do the math again. <laughs> if it was acres, and that would be 450,000 UT, UTs, basically. Oh, wow. wow. That's a lot. Yeah. No, well, let no, me no. do the math. Do the math for square foot to acre. Okay, so it's 43,560 square footage in one acre. So if you're looking at 18 million, so 18 with three zeros, guys, I got to count my zeros here. Okay. And if I divide it by 43,560, which is, that's 413 acres. 413, 413 acres? acres yep. 413 or 400 and... Four yeah. months. So four basically months. 400 football fields wow. of industrial space. Wow. Yeah. A lot. And it, to give you wow. guys an idea, because we're on the topic now, uh, what would you guess is the number one industrial space in the u.s by size if we had to rank all the industrial space by size what would be number one hmm. tesla gigafactory we're the largest industrial wow. space in the u.s and they're in austin yeah yeah so, and, so we can officially say that austin is becoming home to the largest industrial space in the nation now, okay, I and, you know what, Roger and I were having a little uh, <laughs> husband, wife, business owner conversation in the back of the scene before the webinar. I was right. like, okay, you, you know, I know you say all this great news is happening in Austin, but mm -hmm. what does it mean for someone who's looking to buy? Like when people are talking to us, they basically have three big questions for us. Hey, what do I, what do you have for sale for me? What does mm -hmm. it mean for my home value if, if all this is happening? Yeah. And third... What kind of market are we in? Is it buyers or sellers? She That's basically it. said, so what? So what? You know, like, so all what? this good news, <laughs> great. All, like, Skims is opening in domain, great. Tesla is the biggest industrial part, great. Like, what does it mean for a hyper-local person? Why, why should somebody pay attention to this news? And that's something we're going to dissect for you in a minute once you kind I'll of you, know what's going on. I'll tell you what happened. Somebody woke up one day and said, uh, man, what's going down in Texas is a really big deal. Yeah. Well, this is not a new phenomenon. And quite honestly, it's it's been happening, right? So yeah. for, the, for for just, just the plain fact that the largest industrial space is in Austin, I think speaks a lot about uh, how enterprising our, our area is, how enterprising our local governments are, and yeah. how much they've worked towards bringing these companies in here. Yeah. And why is not why is not that Tesla Gigafactory in some other city, right? right. It is here because of how much we love to uh, you know collaborate, how growth minded we are. And so that brings me to the next news here. Look, guys, you know the domain is a benchmark when it comes to uh, mixed use development, right? Everybody thinks of uh, the domain. That, and we we hear it all the time. We hear when we speak with our friends. They said, "Yeah, it's supposed to be like the domain." The second domain's coming, right? So, um, and Kyle, they're actually building something really beautiful, and um, it's expected to bring $62 million in sales and property tax revenues uh, over, I believe, the next 20 years. But it's, uh, and Kyle, if you didn't know, 
is the number three fastest growing city of its size. It's get it's gaining 11% year over year population. And um, and Bree, I don't know if you've had a chance to go out there yet, but there the, there's a trail being developed, which is going to be an 80 mile trail um, in Kyle that's going to connect all the neighborhoods to the businesses. And you can actually take a golf cart onto there and ride around. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's really exciting. I really like the name of the trail. It's called the Vibe Trail. Yeah. You know? So 80 miles off the city is going to, 80 mile trail is going to connect the city of Kyle. So imagine yeah. the walkability score, the desirability score that goes up for the area. Like, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. So it's important to put this, see, I'm here to make it simple for people. You guys. <laughs> news people i'm like talking the plain english for my buyers and sellers and investors yeah. so here's the thing we had a, a condominium listing and um i remember we were just like there hanging out one day and uh, we like to kind of keep our dabs on what's opening what's not opening what are the new businesses opening and i remember on speedway drive in uh, downtown austin area close to ut we saw this old u.s postal office demolished and a new grocery store opened up, an organic local farm grocery store, and a book and coffee shop right next to it. Yeah. And we know the, the crowd and the demographics of people living there, how much they like to walk to a grocery store, how much they like to walk to a bookshop and have uh, a cup of coffee and enjoy a good read and play with their kids outside. So now what does it mean for an, a condominium complex right across the street from them? See, these kind of news take some time for an area to pick up on, you know, like when, when our clients were calling back in November, they're like, Rosie, I want to go on the market and I want to sell. And I was like, well, why do we really need to sell? They had some personal needs that didn't, they didn't need the funds from the property until later in the year, the next year. So I was like, can we wait? And I said, the reason I say that is because look at this. I sent him the pictures of the two big, um, you know, these businesses that just opened right across, which right away increased the desirability and walkability score of the area. So mm -hmm. the moment things open, we don't have impact at the same time, but it takes time for people to catch up to those things. So I remember we waited and we waited for the right reasons. And when we went on the market in less than five days, we had a full price offer on the property because the new buyers are able to see now five months or so, how that area is hyped up. You know, the grand opening is great, but the grand opening becomes a grand business in 90, to, uh, 90 days to six months where people are like, oh, I know about the ghost store. Rather than getting in the car, driving all the way, I can just walk right across and grab a gallon of milk, right? Yeah. So this is something that I want to bring perspective to why a 80 mile wide trail can be a huge okay. thing, especially when you can like golf carts. Yeah. No, it's really relevant. It's very significant. So basically what Rosie said is there was a property selling and the out-of-state owner didn't know what development was happening in the area. He hadn't witnessed it yet. Yeah. And so there's this really cute coffee shop and grocery store that opened. And we told him to wait, not to sell. And uh, now he's experiencing a five-figure benefit or, you know, we really don't want to go into the numbers here, but definitely- Until uh, we close. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So much more than if he would have gone on the market sooner, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is supposed to be project two step. If you hear about it, now you'll know. Uh, it's it's a, uh, there's going to be beer gardens, pickleball. There's going to be multifamily, uh, a lot of paddle boarding and that sort of thing. And uh, I think it's going to create, as Rosie says, a real demand for people to live in the area. And there's th this news is not just uh, isolated to our region or to the Austin area. Uh, I feel like a lot of this is coming up in Houston. Uh, well, Dallas, definitely Dallas and H Dallas and Austin mainly. And so uh, I think the quality of life is really going to be impacted and people are going to have a lot more things to do. Um, and you're, 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 going to be less bored, I would say. Bree is going to be helping a family. I just got a call yesterday about somebody who's moving to Cal, Texas area. So there you mm -hmm. go, Bree. 80 mile yeah. life trail. Yeah, project two step. And uh, definitely take advantage of the of the vibe trail. So now in Georgia, jump into Georgetown, north side of town, totally other side of town. Uh, Georgetown is actually welcoming a uh, auto parts uh, 
company, some a company that actually uh, builds, um, I guess, technology for cars. And they're looking to spend $100 million. And this is north of Georgetown on I-35. Wow. Right. So it'll be 200,000 square feet of space. And uh, they're getting some incentives for bringing industry to the area. Wow. Yep. And so we got hotels being built in Dallas. As I said, Houston, uh, right next to the Texas Rangers Stadium, the Cowboys Stadium, uh, AT&T Stadium. There's going to be a beautiful hotel that's opening up with lots of restaurants. And um, but there's now there's something in the billions again. Right. We said Texas. You're going to see more headlines in the billions. Um, uh, in Denison, which is 75 miles north of Dallas, uh, there's going to be a six billion dollar investment. And uh, they are creating something that's called um, it's um, it, it's called Project uh, God, Preston, uh, something Preston. Gosh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, but they are, but they, but it's a, it's a six billion dollar project on roughly three thousand acres, and um, get ready for like resort style stuff. So we're going to see a lot more. Okay, it's uh, it's a company called Craig Ranch that's bringing it out. Um, but just to give you an idea of what that actually is, uh, it's about three thousand acres. Um, if we were to compare three thousand acres, currently we have a ten billion dollar investment going on in Frisco. Uh, where we have the PGA of America's headquarters, uh, the gol you know, golf and Omni Resort, and also the future home of the Universal Studios theme park. So that's on 2,500 acres, this project, and expected to cost $10 billion. So $6 billion on 3,000 acres uh, and $10 billion in Frisco with the PGA and uh, golf tournaments and Universal Studios, $10 billion. So it's going to be a really big deal. Um, yep. Yeah. Roger, late- you got 90 seconds left for your headlines. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. We got, a, uh, we got more, like 150 jobs being added in Plano. Uh, Blackstone in Houston is, uh, is uh, partnering up with the local university there and just um, committed to, to, I think, $10 million investment over the future and providing internships because they say that they're located there in Houston. They want to create that opportunity for the students there. So, um, you know, what really put Austin on the map was UT and its endowment in West Texas and the oil reserves it has. And uh, that's what's made it a top tier research university and seeing other companies. You can feel any way you want about Blackstone, right? But they're making a local investment into the schools here and providing internship. And uh, so that just means. Well, you got, well, here's the thing. Like anytime a big name is coming in and there's a resistance in the market, you have to handle that objection. And mm-hmm. if you're not considering the local community, then uh, you can ride all over people, but you're not going to get the same market share and acceptance that you will get otherwise. So I think it's a great move on their part to collaborate with locals and community um, and ex- and gain some acceptance, I would say, you know. Yeah, Prairie View A and M is the university, and so that's it for the news. There's more, but uh, I think you guys have some uh, really important stuff to share about the local economy and where to buy. Well, um, it's actually continuing the conversation you're having. Like oftentimes, when people look at the big news online, right? People have a concern that okay, you're giving me all this information. Like, what does it mean for me? There are three big questions like in last decade of real estate that we have always come across with people. Number one, what's for sale? Like, what can I buy if I want to buy? And number two, uh, how much is my house worth? Like, I know all these big giga factories are coming and they're building these cyber trucks. By the way, our neighborhood got the first cyber truck off the neighborhood. Like, it's just cool, you know? <laughs> and I don't know how many cyber trucks you guys are seeing out on the streets. This tells me, you know what I told my, uh, my father-in-law on a road trip this weekend? I said, Dad, it means Tesla is working. Whatever they are here to manufacture, they're manufacturing, which is a good news because it means the local people are getting employed. The values are going to come in. The you know families are going to be here. They're going to expand the families. So this is good news for Austin. Mm-hmm. Now, let's talk about real quick. Um, when Roger gives us this information, like we talk about these things on a weekly basis. 
And uh, we jump on Zoom calls with our local community and we share them this information with them. So I'm going to share with you what is 2024 looking like? We all came out of 2023. You're probably looking for somebody to summarize it for you. But I want to share with you in plain English what it means when all this news is coming over. So before I go forward, if you see me, go this way because I want to stay on track and I want to make sure Brie gets to share a big win she has done for one of her clients and collaborated on negotiating an excellent deal. So I want to save time for that. So whenever we're talking about uh, real estate, this is what Brie does in the back end and our whole team does whenever we are helping people sell or buy or invest in real estate. So there's something called Market Action Index. Now, what is Market Action Index? This is the, this is the index we track for our buyers and sellers to share with you, are you in a seller's market or are you in buyer's market? Because a lot of people get confused that, hey, there's inventory, I can go negotiate, and then buyers think that they can negotiate whatever they want, and they're not able to. So what is a seller's market and what is a buyer's market? We, number one, identify that whenever you're purchasing a property. Number two, we create a market narrative for you, which means in plain English, what does it mean to sell a property right now in your neighborhood? And what does it mean to buy or invest in real estate right now in a certain subdivision or a zip code? Here is why I say that. <clears throat> We're working with buyers and sellers, and um, we look at the neighborhood in general and do a quick CMA on what they should be offering on a property or how much they should be selling. But oftentimes, what people forget to observe in the back end is how to just slow it down. With me, I have realized that a key component in the market is how many price decreases are happening every single week. Like, how often do you go look around and see that, okay, in a neighborhood, like let's suppose Black Hawk in Lugerville, it's a big neighborhood, right? Uh -huh. There are X number of properties for sale, builders are coming in, builders are leaving the market, uh, pendings are happening, closed are happening, but hold up. How many people are actually decreasing the price? How many people are actually making an adjustment by what percentage? And what does it mean for you as a seller or a buyer? If you're trying to negotiate a 10% off the sales price with the, with the seller that just made a 7% adjustment, good luck. Good luck because that seller is ahead of you. They, so people just blindly sometimes try to negotiate without studying the market. And I think that is key when you're buying or investing in real estate or selling real estate. Now, this is what plain English means, right? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is market segment. What is your, like, how is the price point traveling in a market? Like a lot of people say, what is the average price in the neighborhood? Did you guys know there's a huge difference between a median price and an average price? If you're looking at that average price in a neighborhood, you're skewing the data. And I'll tell you how. Anytime somebody looks at an average price in a neighborhood, they could be including an exclusively high price for a unique property or an out of ordinary smaller property that sold for the cheapest price for financial reasons or the, about the features, you know, the house could be really, really small, 1100 square footage property. Now an average price is going to consider this skewed data and you're going to get a skewed number for your neighborhood. Yeah. But in a median price, we look at what is the common price of the neighborhood? What is the common price a neighborhood is selling at? And that makes a huge difference when you are looking to make an offer on a property in the neighborhood, you got to look at these things and you got to allow a professional to interpret it for you. Because otherwise, you can be looking at these big headlines. And I was just looking at the numbers today when we were doing a spring market update. And it shared that the market, there you go. Not right now. Not right now. This is where people are like, hey, not right now. Alive. you're working. Let me tell you. I said, no, 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 not right now. I live really questions, know. live questions. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. You got to give I us a moment to interject on. there. Yeah, you know, like people are like, hey, you're working. Give me my numbers now. <laughs> I like that you guys are reaching out. Thank you so much. So basically, so that, Rosie, can you recap for us again? Like, what, what is the what is the idea? Uh, we're watching the inventory is basically what you're talking about. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that you got to let a uh, you got to understand there's a difference between a median price and an average price. Don't okay. skew that data. Median okay. price is what is the most commonly 
sold price in that neighborhood. So when you're okay. about to invest in real estate, don't buy something exclusively expensive just because it looks pretty. When you're buying an uh, investment, you got to look at a future of that piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. So imagine if the most commonly sales price, most common sales price of a neighborhood is four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Bree, do you think they're going to have a hard time selling at four fifty? If that's like, the average the price, most common price in the it's neighborhood. The most common price, no. no. Not at all. It means people expect to spend four fifty in that neighborhood. So if you're yeah. selling, you're going to have an easier time selling that as well. That mm -hmm. is what means to have a median price index on your fingertips when you're selling a property. Now, nice. the last thing I want to kind of share here is that <clears throat> a real-time market profile. We do hot sheets in our neighborhood. So when you're investing in a real estate or we are watching for our listings, we look at the hot sheet. And in hot sheets, we look at how many price decreases are happening. How many price increases are happening? How many properties are coming back on the market? And how many are leaving the market? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't pay attention to what's leaving. Now, I'll give you an Austin. Uh, I'll kind of just give what's you. What's leaving meaning not selling? And people are like. Coming I off the market unsold and they're giving yeah. up? Okay. They're giving up. Because when, when the real estate leaves the market, it impacts inventory. Mm -hmm. So in overall, in spring, I want to share one thing with you guys. When interest rates go up, inventory goes up. And when interest rates go down, inventory goes down. One thing I have observed in last two years of interest rate fluctuation is the consumer is more sensitive to a change in interest rate price mm -hmm. versus an absolute level. So if interest rates just are you know, set once at 7.5% interest and it just stays, stays like that all year long, there is an acceptance phase. People start going back and forth into the market and they're accepted. But if it goes from 7.75% to 7.5 or 6.25 to 6.85, people are very sensitive to that. I just want to say one thing right here because I do feel like if anyone out there is like me and you're not, you're not tracking sometimes because yeah. uh, I think it takes a little bit more for, for things to really make sense to me. Yeah. Uh, you, these two girls, you're, they're much smarter than I am. But basically, Rosie, what you're saying is, is that you're watching so many data points yeah. that uh, you're securing people and making sure they make the right decision, something that uh, retains value over time, right? Yeah, yeah. And, like Bri and I were working with a client. We are, we are working with a client right now who's, who's contemplating, should I buy or should I extend my lease? Well, let's look at the area that you want to buy in. If the pendings are going up in that neighborhood, like we looked at Q4 data of 2023, the number of pendings and closed went from 19 to 39 since January till now, you need to move. Mm -hmm. It means the area that you are looking at, that area is picking up the pending activity. And mm -hmm. this is very, very important for people to make decisions. Too many people just make a decision on surface level. And sometimes they end up paying more for something they can pay less for. Bree, on that note, take it away and share with us, like, how did you help one of our clients gain instant equity by reading the numbers that I just talked about? Yeah, um, thanks, Ro. I was just wanted to add on that point really quickly. So sometimes a lot of people think it's just black and white and they do look at the average, but there are so many different variables that we should consider whenever we are wanting to make an offer or price a property. And that's why it really helps to have an expert on your side because, you know, you don't, you don't know what you don't know, right. Until you yeah. understand the market and it's, you know, entirety because a lot, you know, even at the very beginning, you know, very, very beginning of my career, I didn't know that you should be looking at the median rather than the average, right. Mm -hmm. It took time and it took, um, you know, working with a lot of people for us to get to that level. So anyways, Here's the happy, exciting news. We have a client who was looking for a property and it was very important to them that they had Round Rock ISD schools. Okay. Mm -hmm. That being said, they were a little bit limited on their budget and square footage was something that was very important to them because they do have, um, you know, several children and they wanted to make sure they had rooms and additional rooms for offices and things of that nature. Okay. We found a property in Round Rock. That's 2,100 square feet. It was listed at 369, but it needed work. Okay. Like I'll how much show, work? Uh, let, let me, let me show you. Mm -hmm. well, show it to me. Oh boy, okay. I'm excited. 
Okay, window. Okay. You see my screen? Yeah. We see the screen, okay. yeah. So let's just take a look at the property. Look, you're going to need new flooring. You're probably going to need new paint. It, you know, you're going to need. It's kind of original, flooring. yeah. Yeah, it's just like, you know, it's. Linoleum, honestly, flooring in the kitchen, yeah. Yeah, it's you just. call like, it builder grade. This is like builder grade. House. Builder grade house. The good news is once we did inspection, the bones are great. I mean, honestly, like HVAC was good. Roof was great. I mean, HVAC, I think, was replaced like four or five years ago. So Ooh. newer water heater listed for mm -hmm. $369. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you want to know what we got it for? Drum roll. Run to make a guess. Oh, yeah, make a guess. Oh, <laughs> guess it was listed for $369. Yeah. Uh, I would say 365. <laughs> no. You don't know us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we read data, you know, like when Bree's going in there and negotiating, we're not just saying, hey, today I just feel like asking for only 2000 off. No, we look at the numbers. And if we cannot back up our offer with proper concrete data, we got no business writing offers for our people. Mm -hmm. So we ran the numbers, ran the market action index on the neighborhood, ran what the median price is, what is the list price to close price ratio of our of that neighborhood, and what would it cost to renovate that property to bring it to market? And Bree, how much did you got in the contract for? Three fifteen. What? Wow! 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 So That's it's like basically like a fifteen percent reduction. Yes. Um, it's a little bit less than 15%, but we had, you know, title policy and things of that nature. So between that neighborhood right now, like if properties are selling fixed up, what are they selling for? Around 430 to 450 Get out. So even if somebody wow. goes into flooring, paint, carpet, and slowly renovates, can we agree they're walking in with a minimum 10 to 15% instant equity? Minimum. And you know how long does it take for you to hold the property and let a new builder construction appreciate over time? Like sometimes no, it goes no, down. I have, my goes curiosity down. is actually driving me crazy here, Bree. Mm -hmm. What was the personality of those people and, and what made them so open to trust you? What were some of the traits that you feel like if, if other clients had some of the same traits, these deals wouldn't go uh, unnoticed? I think with these people, they were open to cosmetic issues, right? Replacing the flooring. Like, it was not pretty. When we walked in, it's yeah. not a pretty property. You know, you have a little bit of smell, right? Um, but it's just older, right? So if you can, if you have the vision that you can say, hey, we can get the flooring redone, we can paint, we can change a countertop, right? But the bones are good. You're not having to replace a roof. You're not having to replace an HVAC or a water heater or do any ma major things, right? You're just yeah. doing some minor things. So I think being open to that and then really understanding the numbers. Like I think originally they were just going to be happy with, you know, they were like, hey, if we can get like $30,000 off, like great. And I was like, well, let me look at the numbers. And we could see that we could get more than 30000 off. I think that was what, like a $54,000 reduction that we got. Wow. So they're able to basically do everything that they want and still have additional money, right? To do, you know, any other repairs that they need because we were able to negotiate a little bit more. And now this is the market, guys. Like we're, I'm going to be working with the sellers to help them sell their property while Bree's helping them buy their next homestead. Contingencies are bad. Yes, they are. You know, we have been missing contingency buyers for like over five years in our market. Now they're back. Yeah. So guys, this is a true local, hyper-local market for you. And if you're curious if you should be in the market or not, if 2024 is where you should redefine your home living style and your home purchase decision, give us a call. Everybody who is benefiting from it, it all began with one conversation. So you're one conversation away from transforming your decision that holds keys to your future. Yeah, that was like fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollars. I mean, Jesus, wow! Thank you, Jesus Christ. Why, why, why did you leave the Christ out? <laughs> um, I want to leave one little nugget that we can share more on next week because I know we're tight on time. 
Yeah. Like, I was able to find some affordable housing from Habitat for, for Humanity that's okay. under 300 in Austin, wow. brand new construction wow. homes that look really, really good. And I believe if it's a single person, the income is like 64, 65,000 or less mm -hmm. that they can be mm -hmm. making. So if anyone knows anyone who might be interested in this, we're going to touch on this next week. Wow. We might have a buyer because the buyer that I got for Austin, they might be a good fit for that. So I'll get you in touch with them right away. Yeah, I could think of a few people. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much. This is Rosie Bree and Roger uh, from Rivet Real Estate. This year, we commit to come to you live. You know, too many people are like, hey, I wish you guys were just live so I can just be on social media and watch you and hear you guys while I'm plugging some work away. So this is our attempt to make happen what you have requested. Love you all. Have a wonderful week. See Bye you next week. Bye. Bye.